Come in. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall with another strange story about the world of the macabre. A very real world, by the way. Because if you think about it, haven't you said to yourself, I can't believe it, or that's the weirdest thing I've ever heard? Behind such reactions, there are explanations of a sort. Some make sense, others, well, others defy explanations because we huddle together in our small world, which is only a small part of an infinite universe. And nobody knows what unknown influences can change the course of our lives. For Joey O'Hara, it began not with an unknown influence, but with a policeman. Our mystery drama, The Three Elders of Lifeboat Landing, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Roy Windsor and stars Mason Adams. It is sponsored in part by Allied Van Lines and Buick Motor Division. I'll be back shortly with Act One. What began innocently enough, many of us have been stopped at least once for exceeding the speed limit, was to lead Joey O'Hara into an experience so devastating that until now it could never be told. And even now, names have been changed. The origin of the experience was at a lunch between Joey's brother, Phil O'Hara, and his client, Ross Randall. I'm glad it's over with and that we won. You saved me from a whopping fine and maybe even a jail sentence. You're a very good lawyer, Phil. Thank you. Tax cases are tricky. Well, I assure you, Phil, my accountant and I were certain those entertainment charges were deductible. Now, I'll tell you what I'd like to do. Would you and Mrs. O'Hara be my guests for dinner sometime soon in Lifeboat Landing? Oh, that's not necessary. No, 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 no. But will you? Well, we'd be delighted. I mean, maybe you could leave the city mid-afternoon, and depending on the weather, we can play around a round of golf. Or a few sets of tennis, if you prefer that. Then your wife can join us for dinner at the club. Fine, fine. Tennis, weather permitting. No problem. We have a bubble. You have? Mm. Hey, I thought they cost a mint. Well, money's no problem in Lifeboat Landing. What the village wants, it gets. And pays for, of course. In proportion to a person's income. Lifeboat Landing is ideal, Phil. I know you'll enjoy seeing it. Well, I look forward to it. Carol and I, we have two small children, and we've been thinking about moving out of the city. School's expensive, and we think we'd like to have them grow up in one of the suburbs. Well, life on landing is not exactly a suburb, Phil. We're a village of 4,000 in southeastern Long Island. Actually, it's more rural than suburban. Beautiful homes, clean air, no crime. Really? No crime? None. Hmm. Now, if you and Mrs. O'Hara have any interest in moving out our way, I don't think there'd be any problem. Just bring the money to the real estate agent. Not quite. First, you have to be approved by the three elders. Oh? Like being okayed by a private club? Well, kind of yes and no. It's an integrated village, but the three elders... Who are? Overseers, if you will. They decide if a family is suitable for us and we for them. Only then is a family allowed to buy property in Lifeboat Landing. Well, isn't that discrimination? We refer to it as selection. I see. And what happens if one of the 4,000 strays from the beaten path? It's not a beaten path, Phil. It's an organized, disciplined, and worry-free way of life. Yeah, but what if someone gets out of line? Then what? The three elders get him back on line. Or he leaves. Sit down, Joey. What's on your alleged mind? Mm. You've been editing this newspaper so long, you don't know a news story from a, a promotion for Aunt Lily's Golden Grits. You know what's on my mind, Frank. Yeah. And what happened to those two guys? And what about the cashier who was plugged and, and left for dead on the bank floor and was up and around the next day? I saw that myself before a guard showed me the door. Well, how do you know it's the same cashier? Oh, come on, Frank. I've been cashing checks in lifeboat landing for years on my way to Montauk for fishing. It's, it's the same teller the holdup guy has laid out. Well, how do you know that? We don't have a picture. Well, little Joey's got big ears. A pal of mine's a conductor on the railroad. Now, he's been taking tickets from the guys who get on at lifeboat landing, and he hears them talking about the holdup. No question the cashier was killed. But the next day, he's back at work. Same cashier. And from what my pal overheard, the description fits. It's a miracle. 
Now, look, Joey, run along and play. Oh. Forget whatever's bugging you. It's months ago. So the cashier's okay. Good. Now go away. And the two stick-up guys? And what happened to them? They were caught by the police of lifeboat landing, but uh, where are they? Well, who cares? In jail, probably, or sent upstate. But they haven't been. Since they pulled the stick-up, they've never been heard of. And that doesn't grab you? Frank. Now, let me give you some advice. I've been sitting at this desk for a long time. Lifeboat landing's unique. Nothing that happens out there ever gets reported. I mean, ever. Not by the island papers, not by us. Now, maybe that's because nothing ever does happen. If that's wrong, I don't want to hear about it. Well, I do. I'd be a lousy newspaper reporter if I couldn't smell out a story. You know who Mr. Lloyd is, don't you? Yeah, assistant to the publisher. What about him? He lives in Lightboat Landing. Hey, then maybe he can help me. You want to be out of a job? What? I knew about your interest in those guys, so I spoke to Mr. Lord. He told me politely not to waste my time or yours on a petty felony. But the two guys disappeared. I said as much to Mr. Lord. He just smiled and said he assumed they'd been dealt with. What does that mean? Well, he said he didn't know. But someone must know. Joey, listen to the old ostrich. Keep your nose out of lifeboat landing. Mm. Or else I get the old heave-ho. Or worse. Let me help you, darling. Sure, thank you. Oh, what a lovely room. Yeah, this is the grill. The main dining room is upstairs. Nice, isn't it? Mm. What are those cages out there? <laughs> the platform tennis court. The pool is just beyond them, and the golf course winds around it along the shoreline. I think it's beautiful. Mm-hmm. You saw the tennis bubble as we drove in. Very impressive. This place must cost an arm and a leg. Would you believe $500 a year for everything except food and drink? It can't be. Yeah, Ross Randall told me. He ought to know. And the food is excellent. I had a late lunch here with him. I've never tasted better scallops. Is he joining us? Yeah, any minute. He stayed on in the sauna. He's having a rub down. I showered and I came up to look around. Yeah, you are right, Carol. It is impressive. Are we staying here? Are we having dinner at Mr. Randall's house? I don't know why. Well, if we're serious about moving out of the city, I'd like to see the inside of one of these elegant homes. I didn't see anything we could afford. I wandered around a bit, and this village is one estate after another. The houses must cost a fortune so you can imagine what's inside of them. Yeah. I'm glad we had a chance to see the place. You told Mr. Randall we've been thinking of moving out of the city. Yeah. And he's pushing lifeboat no, landing. He's not pushing it, Carol. You move here by invitation. I don't like the idea of someone passing judgment on whether or not we're good enough for a place like this. Judgments are passed every day by each of us, darling. Don't sound like a lawyer. You know what I mean. Why can't we live where we please? We can, but not in lifeboat landing unless the three elders say we can. Phil, that's not democratic. I agree. It's autocratic. But... Can you put down these benefits? How did this place come about? Do you know? Well, we'll ask Randall. He could... Ah, oh, wait a minute. Here he comes. I'm so very glad you could join us for dinner, Mrs. O'Hara. Thank you. You have a beautiful club, Mr. Randall. And the village, it's like a picture postcard. So you did have a chance to drive around? Well, just for a half hour. But I'm as impressed with the village as Phil is with your club. Are the dues really only $500 a year? Why should they be more? That amount is adequate to meet our costs. There are a thousand families here, about 4,000 persons. Every family belongs to the club. Half a million is more than enough to meet our bills. How did all this come about? I was asking Phil. Well, many years ago, this was just another potato farming area. Uh -huh. But about 35 years ago, a few men decided to buy the acreage and found a village of carefully screened families whose frustrations were common to all. Yeah, the interdependent community. You said it was something like that, I think. That's right. Color, race, religion meant nothing. We wanted families that believed in honesty, the work ethic, high cultural standards, and who abhorred waste, ugliness, and crime. Now, if in the judgment of the three elders, a family qualified for residence here, they could make it possible. By saying, okay, you may buy the house? Oh, much more than that. We would make certain that you could buy the house at a price you could afford. And be in debt for life. No, no. Only a debt to the community. Now, you're a lawyer, Phil. 
If you bought a house in Lifeboat Landing for a pittance, your debt to the community would be as a lawyer. At any time, you might be called on to prosecute or defend for us at no fee to you. That's what we mean by interdependence. Isn't that kind of communistic? No, Mrs. O'Hara. We are elitist in spirit. We believe in the uncommon man. Lifeboat Landing is a tribute to him. What if a family is allowed to move here and doesn't like it, Ross? What happens then? He leaves. And what about his house? He sells it only to a person the three elders have found acceptable. What if he objects? Just ups and sells it to someone he knows who hasn't been approved by the elders. Well, he's warned not to, of course. Yeah, but say he's stubborn and he doesn't listen. Then his house might be raised. Level to the ground? We've had that experience only once, Mrs. O'Hara. A long time ago. Well, Ross? We could use another lawyer, Fritz. Uh, he seemed all right. He helped me wriggle out of that tax evasion suit. Hmm. He's tractable. I don't know about the wife. Neither do I. Handsome woman. Quite intelligent. But her mind's still filled with cliches. It would take time to get her to accept our kind of ordered society. I don't understand minds like that. Here we offer everything, literally everything, but the Mrs. O'Hara's of the world treasure more than anything the right to defy, to act independently. Well, she might come to see that in time. The system works. Oh, which reminds me, Ross, uh, Mr. Lord spoke to me about one of his reporters who is interested in those two hoodlums who held up the bank and shot the cashier. No. That's all been disposed of, hasn't it? It was at the time. You did a miraculous job, Fritz, in saving his life. I won't ask you how you got him back on his feet the next day, but I marvel at your skill. <laughs> Thank you. Who's the reporter who might come snooping around? Joey O'Hara. Your Phil O'Hara's brother. Oh. I see. That's too bad. Well, we'll be on the alert for him. Yes. He could be an embarrassment. So, you and I have doubts, yes? Yes. Let's have Larson show the O'Hara's some houses, and then we'll meet and hear his opinion. Phil's all right, but I'm not sure about his wife. And uh, the reporter brother, if he becomes persistent, you'll know what to do. <laughs> One definition of society is a voluntary association of individuals for common ends. Chemists get together and presumably talk chemistry. Nothing wrong with that. But a village of 4,000 in which, it would appear, everyone thinks and acts alike? As Americans, we hold many truths to be self-evident, and one of them is the right to protest, but not in lifeboat landing as we will learn when I return with Act Two. As a nation, we are protesters. Protest to Americans is second nature. We protested the tax on tea, and a nation was born. We protested against slavery, and a terrible civil war followed. We have died to preserve the right of each man to independent thought. Perhaps we haven't realized the ideal of making the world free for democracy, but neither have we become robots in an ordered society. In our story, it's not Yankee go home, but Joey get lost. Joey, I mean it. Get lost. Not a chance, old pal. Guess who's going to help me get the inside dope and what happened to those two guys? My brother, Phil. You got a brother? I thought you were one of a kind. I am. Phil's another type. <laughs> I like Phil already. What's his racket? Uh-oh. Hold it. That your brother? The lawyer who got Russ Randall off on that tax evasion case? Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. That's my brother, Phil. He's uh, bought a house in Lifeboat Landing, and he and the family are moving out there in a couple of weeks. That's my inside track, baby. Hey, you're a real dandy, you are. Wait until I bust the truth across the front page. Before that happens, you'll be bust out of here. What's wrong with you, Frank? Two stick-up guys just vanish, and you don't think there's a story there? I told you until my throat is dry. Lay off lifeboat landing. Something smells out there, Frank, and you know it. I've got a right to ask questions. No one can toss me in the clink just for asking questions. No one has. 
You've been out there. Mm -hmm. The bank cashier wouldn't talk to me. Well, that was his privilege. What about the police? Yeah, the police. They said they didn't know what I was talking about. Well? Frank, that's what's funny. I'm not allowed to talk to the cashier, and nobody else in the bank, including the security guard, would, would even speak to me. And the police... <laughs> They just smiled and told me to run along. What goes on out there? It's a tight little community, that's what goes on. And no hard-nosed reporter's going to loosen it up. I don't believe it. I'll find somebody who'll spill the beans. Yeah, in your face. Why do you keep saying things like that? Because, dummy, if you become an annoyance to the three elders who run the place, you just might join those two hold-up guys your heart bleeds for. You're scared. Aren't you, Frank? For your sake. Yeah. Thank you, officer. That will be all. Yes, sir. Good night, gentlemen. You run a pretty high-handed community. Yes, Mr. O'Hara. We do. I go over the speed limit by ten miles an hour. But you did go over the limit. Isn't that so? Get it over with how much... Well, there's no fine, only a warning. A swell, but I got the message when the cop picked me up, so what's the point of this little get-together? There are several points, Mr. O'Hara. You're Ross Randall, right? That's right. And it was your brother Phil who defended me in a tax suit and who has since been allowed to move to Lifeboat Landing. So I heard. I was on my way to his housewarming party. We won't keep you. But as Dr. Heineman just said, we must give you a warning. Okay, shoot. If you're arrested again, you'll be sent to prison for 30 days. <laughs> in your hat? No. In our jail. You couldn't wait with that. That is not worth commenting on, Mr. O'Hara. As Mr. Randall has said, you're at today's. Then I'd sue you in every court in the land. What kind of garbage are you trying to hand out? Another warning. You are now members of this community. For his sake, I hope you won't become an embarrassment to them. You mean an embarrassment like uh, asking what happened in that bank robbery and to the two stick-up guys who disappeared. I'm a newspaper man. There's a story there, and I'm going to dig it out. Or fish it out, if you get what I mean. I have no idea what you're talking about. Uh -huh. And I don't suppose you have either, Mr. Randall. Mr. O'Hara, this is a civilized village. We don't have crime here. If crime enters our community, we deal with it quickly and discreetly. That's why you've been brought before us. Don't break our laws. We obey them, and visitors must. And for your own sake, stop your search for those imaginary hoodlums. All right, you're free to go. Won't you stay overnight, Joey? No, thanks, Carol. Forget what happened, kid. It's not a federal case. Well, it's going to be before I get through with it, Phil. And you're going to help me. You're back on the vanishing stick-up, man. Give up. That happened months ago. I wish you'd forget it. How can you say that? Don't you care? It's none of my business. And you've been told that it's none of yours. And the more I'm told to lay off, the surer I am that there's something strange about lifeboat landing. No, not strange. Different is all. It is different. It's highly organized. Each of us helps the other guy. If I have a problem, I can get help. If someone here needs legal advice, I'm here to supply it as a neighborly obligation. Now, what's wrong with that? Everything. You have no privacy. You've, you've sold out to a, a weird society that provides you with every material benefit in exchange for, for dumb obedience. You've got it all wrong, Joey. I think and I say what I please. I go to work freely and come home to a fine house in an ideal community. Phil, can't you see what kind of place this is? You call it an interdependent society. When persons spy on each other and lead plastic lives, that's what I call the police state. But, Joey, where else could we find all, all this? You'll admit it's a beautiful village. Sure. And Vienna was a, a beautiful and carefree city until the Nazis took it over and the Gestapo paid neighbors to spy on neighbors. Isn't that the system you've got here? You understand, Carol. I can see it in your eyes. Ah, it's too much housewarming, pal. Spend the night, huh? No. No, I'll be on my way. Look, both of you, I'm... I'm sorry to be like this. It's your home, your community, and I, I wish you well. I, I hope it works out. It just wouldn't be for me. 
I don't like regimentation. Never mind. It's a great source of satisfaction to me to have everything organized efficiently. This village works. And everybody obeys, including the opposition. <laughs> if there is one. Of course there is. But the majority opinion prevails and everyone accepts it. That's brainwashing, Phil. <sighs> well, what about it? Can you help me find out what happened to those two guys? You've been told not to snoop, Joey. Uh-huh. Meaning you won't ask questions for me. Well, then I'll have to find out for myself. I'll say good night. I'll see you to the door. So long, Phil. Good night. Oh, please don't stir up trouble, Joey. I'm, I'll try not to, but... Carol, this place is not for you. If I can't stand it, we can always leave. I wonder... It's one thing to get into a secret society. Getting out's another. Oh, I wish you wouldn't say things like that. It makes me feel spooky. You said it. I didn't. But I know how you feel. I thought you were entitled to know, Phil. Thanks, Ross. I appreciate it. I said pretty much the same things to my brother last night. He's a flag waver, you know. So I'm told. But, Phil, we just can't have him prying into the affairs of Lifeboat Landing. For our common good, the elders simply won't permit it. I know, I know, and I agree. Now, we have no crime because our justice is swift and severe. That's the only deterrent to crime, Phil. Now, we're not cruel, but we are absolute. We've had thieves, and they've been banished. What makes justice work in Lifeboat Landing is common consent. Once the elders, after consultation with the police and the judge, have made a decision, all 4,000 of us accept it. Right. Now, for some reason, your brother has found a cause celeb in the bank holdup, and he's determined to find out what happened to the gunman. I've told him he's been warned off. He asked me to help. I told him it's none of my business. Quite right. And I don't propose to explain what happened, but the disappearance of the men will have a salutary effect. Others will think twice before they try a stick up in lifeboat landing. Right. You uh, do like our way of life, Phil. And um, Mrs. O'Hara and the children? Oh, very much, certainly. I ask because some of the ladies had tea with your wife the other day and sensed a vague reluctance on her part to participate wholeheartedly in their plans for next season's plays for our community center. Yeah, I heard. Our center tries to present plays both classic and modern that are pure entertainment. Now, your wife suggested that we produce at least one protest play. Its subject was racial violence. And the language in it, frankly, is repugnant to anyone who isn't an animal. I know what you mean. Carol's always been a little liberal. Well, the center exists to entertain, not to foment trouble. I'll talk it over with her, Ross. Good. Oh, and Phil. Yeah. Speak to your brother. Our warning to him was not a gesture. He's become an irritant. And if he aggravates the situation, the warning will have to be acted upon. That's how it is. Yeah, I understand. Just who does he think he is? Ross Randall warning me. All he said was if I broke the speed limit again, I'd go to jail for 30 days. Ridiculous. I'd have a lawyer spring me in half an hour. He wasn't talking about you being arrested for speeding. You're worried about me snooping into what happened to those two holdup men, right? Joey, why don't you drop that? Not on your life, But what Carol. do they mean to you? They were just a couple of bums who got caught robbing a bank. And vanished. So what? So everything. Look, I don't even know who the guys were. and They're probably no good, but this is America, Carol, baby. And those guys were entitled to a hearing before a judge and then sentenced. He just can't be rubbed out. That happens in a police state, but, but not here. Now, can't you see that? I give up. It's your neck, Joey. Well, I'm not afraid of Ross Randall. He's not going to feed me to the sharks the way he did with those two hold-up punks. You sure jumped to conclusions. But where did they go? Whatever happened to them, Randall doesn't care to tell me. When the three elders reach a decision, others act on it. There are 4,000 of us here, Joey. Us? Are you one of them now, Phil? Yes. My law practice in the city has increased by half since we moved to Lifeboat Landing. We love our house. The schools are good. The village is kept beautifully. The club is marvelous. And our neighbors are congenial. What more could I want? Freedom. Freedom to think and to act as you please. We have all the freedom we need. Oh, come on, both of you. Let's not get nasty. Joey, we're here. We now belong to Lifeboat Landing. 
You don't like it? That's okay. But please, let's not have any more quarrels. And listen to what Phil's been trying to pound into your head. Mm -hmm. The warning. We'll see you in town, Joey. Not out here. Okay. You still don't see why, do you? I'm not that dumb. They've got me marked. I don't know that. But you sense it. Well, that's okay. It's not going to stop me. I'm going to expose Lifeboat Landing for what it is. A, a fascist commune. At least I'm going to try. Even though I might end up in the briny. Aristotle wrote that democracy arose from men thinking that if they are equal in any respect, they are equal in all respects. I don't think it's worked that way here. You and I have equal rights with, say, a famous doctor, but could we pretend to be equal in the ability to invent the polio vaccine? More on the subject as it applies to lifeboat landing when I return with Act Three. I have gathered so far, lifeboat landing on the southeastern shore of Long Island is the ideal community. Joey O'Hara disagrees. He's a newspaper man, of course, with a natural instinct for news, and he finds any controlled society repugnant. His curiosity was aroused by the disappearance of two men who held up the local bank and vanished. That's just what it is, Frank. So are some of the private clubs around town. What's wrong with that? Guys from the same college band together, other guys who like boats, beer-drinking guys, they're all over town. But they don't decide flatly what taxes you're going to pay or, or, or what happens to a guy who holds up a liquor store. Okay. You got something up your sleeve. What is it? Take a look at this. There's a picture of a, some German soldier in a fatigue jacket. So? It's Dr. Fritz Heinemann. Who's he? Some small fry ex-Nazi? That's right. Well, there's lots of them still drifting around. Now, this guy drifted to lifeboat landing. So what? Is he on the wanted list? No. He came here from South America and took out citizenship papers in 1950. So what about him? He's one of the three elders of the village. Oh? Heinemann's the kind of guy who'd still be indoctrinated with, with law and order and obedience and uh, a system of informers. Just what lifeboat landing so has plenty Heinemann of. So Heinemann is an ex-Nazi. So what? So he and the other two elders, Ross Randall and uh, some guy named Larson, rule absolutely. That's why there's no crime. Somebody drifts into lifeboat landing and commits a crime, he's never heard of again. You the two stick-up men? They got it, Frank. It's easy to cover up two murders if 4,000 persons want it covered up. And what I want to do, Frank, is, is to begin to write a series of articles about the place. No good. You said nobody out there is willing to talk. What you think is one thing. But unless you got facts, we'd be inviting a libel suit. The paper can't print a story without possessing hard facts. You haven't got any. Oh, sure, you know about Heinemann and you got a bug in your ear about the two hoods... But what have you got, really? Nothing. I've got more than that. If the three elders weren't worried about an investigation, would they warn my brother that I could get hit? Would your brother testify that you'd been threatened? I don't know. I do. From what you've told me about him since he moved out there, your brother wouldn't talk. Mm, he's my brother. He's also a guy who'd probably like to stay alive. <laughs> Now what? They just want to come here and talk. You know, that makes me nervous. I feel the way I used to feel when I hadn't done my homework. What have I done now? The play committee. Oh, no. I saw the light. No protest play for next season. Phil. I know what you're going to say. But doesn't conformity get you down? It's smothering. I like it here, Carol. But if you don't, we can always move back to the city. But think of what we've got. And what we've given up. I'll let them in. Hello, Ross. Hello, Fritz. Come on in. Thank you. We won't be five minutes, Phil. Ah, good evening, Mrs. O'Hara. Hello, Dr. Heinemann. Ross, please sit down. 
Shall I stay, or oh, please, do you want me? Please, please, What we have to say is for both of you. Sit down, Fred. Phil, we think we've made a mistake. I really made the mistake, but the elders act together. We share credit and errors. A mistake? Uh, Ross and I met with Mr. Larson, the third elder, and we have concluded uh, reluctantly that lifeboat landing is not quite right for your family. I'm sorry to hear that. We like it here very much. Yes, I think you do, Phil. But what about you, Carol? Well, I'm getting used to it. It's taking a while because it's a different experience for me. But I love my house and everything else about the village. Yes, physically it is perfect. And the reason for that is efficient organization. Some persons fit the yoke, others do not. Many personal inclinations have to be repressed for the good of all. Decisions made by the three elders represent the majority opinion, and the minority has to accept it. And some persons might resent that kind of rule as arbitrary. Well, it, it is kind of, isn't it? Well, isn't it preferable to constant turmoil? The elders decide what is best for all and put it into effect. To be efficient and productive, a house needs a head. So does a business. So does government. Understand? Yes. Turmoil and bitterness and neighbor set against neighbor. Those are the very reasons that democracy is inefficient. But each of us should be free to say what he thinks. That is the reason for our visit. We suggest it will be happier if you leave lifeboat landing. We, uh, we would like to have you stay with us, but not as dissidents. And uh, then, Phil, there's your brother... I told him to stay away. It wasn't easy. I'm fond of him. He's still bent on making trouble. How could he? He can't. But he refuses to believe it. Now, I can give you one piece of news that you may not be aware of. He's been discharged from his job. You won't give up, will you, Ross? Well, I do like him, Fritz. And his wife will come around. It seems a shame to tell him to move because of that brother of his. Well, he could be disposed of very easily. Ah, too obvious. The publicity would be unpleasant. And I don't know if that editor would stand still for the disappearance of Joey O'Hara. But without facts, who would believe what he might say? The two hold-up men disappear. Joey O'Hara disappears. The first are missing because a rival gang took care of them... O'Hara is missing because he was close to exposing the thing. That kind of thing can be maneuvered, Ross. Let me try something else first. I have an idea. You sure it's uh, okay for you to be seen with me, Brother oh, Phil? Come off it. I mean it. You keep on associating with the headhunter, they'll kick you out of boat landing. They're going to. No. Oh, that's the best news I've heard in days. No kidding. When did this happen? Last night. After Heinemann and Randall suggested we might be happier if we moved out, they told me that you'd been fired. I tried to get you. <laughs> I was afloat. Me and my editor, uh, my pal Frank, I uh, got him home and fell asleep in his living room. I'm sorry about your job. The editor warned you. Yeah, yeah, I know. Not his fault. The word came down from Mr. Lord. He's from Lifeboat Landing, you know. Ah. Well, I'm not sorry you're coming back to the city, Phil. That place bugs, Carol. Oh, it's not definite. I suppose I'm the reason they want you out. Yeah, it's mostly you, yes. Well, I should be sorry, but I'm not. Heinemann is a former Nazi. He settled in Lifeboat Landing and built a model brainwashed village. It, it works like a, a perfect clock... Great, if you're a clock, you get wound up and just tick away. Heinemann, a former Nazi? That's right. Oh, he's an American citizen now, but he's he's put together a perfect model of a town occupied by the Wehrmacht. Everybody smiling on the outside, spying on their neighbors, scared stiff on the inside, because if you step out of line, the three elders will get you. That's not quite true, Joey. Before they take an important position, they pull the heads of each of the families. Mm -hmm. And you're going to disagree with what the elders recommend? Not on your life. Another thing about Heinemann. He's also some kind of uh, faith healer. Now what does that mean? I've heard that he can affect some remarkable cures. 
He's a, an internist, but he also dabbles in the side and faith healing. The reason I got interested was that bank cashier. He was left for dead. The next day, he's up and around, good as new. I don't believe it. The faith healing, I mean. I, the guy probably was just Nick. I believe it. I'd believe anything about Heinemann and those other two. Are you all right for money, Joey? <laughs> sure. I'm rolling at about uh, 140 bucks. Well, if you need any. Thanks, thanks. And what now? Now I've got another surprise for you. I'm having cocktails at six with Heinemann and Randall at your community club in lovely lifeboat landing. Oh, come on. What for? Persistence pays off. They're going to tell me all about the two holdup guys who floated away into space. <laughs> Quite right, Mr. O'Hara. I was a member of the Nazi party. I was deluded, as many of my companions were. That, however, was many years ago. I escaped to South America and then to the United States, where I am a citizen. Everyone in Lifeboat Landing knows this. Why is the fact so interesting to you? Mm, because the government of Lifeboat Landing reflects an alien philosophy. Your deluded philosophy of absolute rule. All of us here believe in a democracy controlled by the three elders who enforce the majority rule. So two guys stick up your bank and the majority approves rubbing them out. Exactly. You admit you had them disappear? Yes. Without trial and without a defense? That's right. That's murder. It is self-preservation. Fear is our weapon, and all of us believe in it. And you place yourself above our accepted concept of law. We invited you here to demonstrate how justice works in our village. You were warned about speeding. Oh, don't tell me I'm going to be punished for throwing a cigarette in the street. You're not going to be punished at all. But you are about to be rendered ineffective in your attempt to expose us for our way of life. Which includes, when it's necessary, the act of extermination. Oh, you're giving me a mighty juicy story, Mr. Randall. And you may feel free to write it if you want your niece, then your nephew, then Mrs. O'Hara, and then your brother to drop out of sight forever. You... you'd murder them? Drop your investigations. Or that's exactly what will happen. Oh, they're getting out of this, this sick place. No, they are going to remain. We had thought of telling them to leave and then of dealing with you. This way will be less troublesome. With you alive, no one will believe your story. I'll notify every law enforcement agency in the country. And who would believe you? Your niece is drowned at the beach. Your nephew? Well, why go on? You, you, you do that? Oh, yes. That's... That's fiendish. We like our way of life. And no one will be allowed to interfere with it. All right, now you're free to go. We've warned you. And I assure you we can act. I'll get my brother and his family out of here tonight. Feel free to. But will your brother and his wife believe you? And even if they do, who would print your story? You have no facts. You're helpless, Mr. O'Hara. You... Dirty Good stinking. night, Mr. O'Hara. Have a nice drive back to the city. Where are you calling from, Joey? What? Y you say they knock off your family one by one? Joey, are you sober? All right, all right. Save the language. Huh? Yeah. I'll do better than that. I'll have the state police escort Phil and his family back to New York. And I'll bust the story all over tomorrow morning's paper. Yeah, yeah, it may cost me my job, but I'd be a real jerk not to save four lives. I'd make that five. Well, they get you too, Joey. Okay, pal. Hang up and hide out. I'll take over. A fantasy? Of course. It really can't happen here. But back in 1935, Sinclair Lewis thought it could. 
And it was he who anticipated the monstrous war fomented by a madman who wanted to impose a rigid order on Europe and then on the rest of the civilized world. He failed, just as tyranny failed in the strange village of Lifeboat Landing. I will return shortly. Our cast included Mason Adams, Ann Shepard, Mandel Kramer, Robert Phelps, and Guy Sorrell. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. Radio Mystery Theater was sponsored in part by Buick Motor Division and Allied Van Lines. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams. <laughs> 